Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are reviewing uh, another one of the feats, the new feats from Big B Presents Glory of Giants. This one is called Strike of the Giant. You missed a word, Bob. It's Glory of the Giants. That's Look, you can look on uh, Amazon's listing. Whatever. That's a great point. It's quality assurance all over the place. That V is ugh, so important. In any case, this feat is a background feat. So hypothetically, you can get this for free if you take the background that is like the Raised by Giants background. The other background we talked about prior was a different background, but I think I might have alluded that was... It's not important. What is important is that if you do want to take the background that gives you this feat, you have to be like, hey, table, DM, can everyone else have a feat so I can take this background? Other than that, it just requires that you have proficiency with a martial weapon, which is, I think, a really dumb proficiency to stick onto this, but whatever. Um, I don't know. So Strike you have... of the giant sounds like you, you might be using a weapon. I... Hill giants use giant clubs. Well, maybe it's a strike of a more advanced giant. There's a strike called hill strike. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Okay, so this is, you have absorbed primeval magic that gives you an echo of the might of giants. When you take this feat, choose one of the benefits listed below. Once per turn, when you hit a target with a melee weapon attack or a ranged weapon attack using a thrown weapon, you can imbue the attack with an additional effect depending on the benefit you chose. And then it's got six unique benefits, one for each of the giants in the ordning for the, uh, the, the there's like the storm, cloud, fire, frost. I can do this. Stone Hill. Nailed it. Well uh, I think that I think that's the order. If I'm wrong, commenters, let me know what I got wrong. So cloud, each of these basically gives you a bonus to damage and a little effect or a lot of extra damage. So like, for example, fire strike is the most basic. It's just on hit, you do a bonus d10 damage. Great. So you can use fire strike whenever you hit for a bonus d10 damage. Cloud strike does an extra d4 damage. And if the target is a creature, it makes a wisdom saving throw or becomes invisible until the start of your, or you become invisible to it until the start of its next turn. We have problems with the invisibility rules in this game. Yeah, we do. And this is a can of worms I'm not prepared to open, is this selective con- invisibility. This, no, but it is invisibility specific to a target creature, so it still relative, counts. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You are invisible relative to that creature, right. but other creatures do not perceive you as invisible. So you get the advantages of being invisible against that creature, right. but not others. Basically, right. sounds whereas strange. you know the problem we had before was all right i'm invisible this creature has something that sees through invisibility it doesn't matter i still have the invisible condition on me which will still happen so. if if the thing you hit has the invisibility you still get advantage on attack rolls against it right so that's nice, <laughs> nice that's still stupid. dumb yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, it also says uh, you, you're invisible until the start of your next turn or until after you make an attack roll. So you won't get advantage on all of your attack rolls, but like if you hit something with it on the first attack on your turn, you can go invisible and get advantage with the second attack, which is a cute little play pattern. Or, you know, do something shady, sneak around, do something else funky. Uh, I already said Fire Strike is the D10 bonus damage. Frost Strike is it takes an extra D6, and then it makes a con save, and if it fails, its speed is reduced to zero. And the zero is very different than minus 10. Zero is really good. Being able to just root, root something in place on a failed con save on hit, it's pretty cool. Now, you definitely want to be throwing weapons for this to, like, have mileage, but that's a pretty neat ability. We've got Hill Strike, so it takes an extra bonus D6 damage again. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw, and then they change the wording. Or have the prone condition is the new wording, as opposed to is knocked prone, which is, they did a whole big push in this game to make it more readable, and if they're not going to go and make it more readable by doing crap like this, I want to see symbols. I want shorthand. We don't need to be reading books to read this text anymore if we're going to do this at wizards. Be better. Anyway, um, they're watching this. They all watch all of our videos. At Tail Strike, you can knock them prone with a bonus D6 damage. Stone Strike is what's next, bonus D6 force damage. It makes a strength savers push 10 feet in a straight line. I think this is by far the worst, but the one Bob's going to like the most. Probably. And then we've got Storm Strike, which is D6 lightning damage on hit. If the target is a creature, it makes a con save, or it has disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of your next turn. So oh, you... slow, slow down, slow down. Push back 10 feet in addition to D10 bonus damage? D6. D6, all right. But you still like that better than just straight up D10 bonus damage from fire. I don't. You do. Well, no, all right, no. I meant you would like the fire better. Yes, I do like the fire better. All right. It, not I always, do not. but most of the time I'd rather have the D10 fire damage on my sheet than the tempo push. Okay. 
That was my question. Go on. Uh, yeah, so Storm Strike is con save or it disadvantage on all attack rolls until the start of your next turn. So that's like the supportive one where you want to like debuff something. It notably is like slightly, it, it's close to Cloud Strike and that Cloud Strike, they'll have a disadvantage on attack rolls against you if you use it as your second attack of the turn. So that's, you know, assuming you're a martial character. Um, but you know, they're comparable. And then the uh, the rest of this text tells you the saving throw DC, which is eight plus your strength or con mod plus proficiency bonus. So like normally it'd be 13. It's like close to a spellcasting modifier basically for martial characters. And it also says you can use this feat a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and get them all back when you finish a long rest, which is too long for proficiency bonus number of uses, in my opinion, for what these do. Because these are like close to martial maneuvers and that's not really worth a long rest recharge for like two uses or three uses. Yeah. But it's still kind of fine. And you look at all of these, you get one of these. They also, I should say... All of them are prerequisites to their own expanded future feats. So all right, like, that was going to be my question. I thought, all right, so this is still all the base feet. This is all the base feet. All right, I thought that might have been the base feet, and then here are all the other feats you were listing. But not no, quite. So, all right. Not Each quite. of these expands to give you a little element of the giants. Most of those we'll talk about in their own videos, but basically you get an ability score bump. It's normally, they all give you an ability score bump that can be strength. Most of them can be con or whiz. And then they also give you, like, either a little like useful bonus action attack which is pretty sweet in some cases other times they give you jack shit which is the case of hill giant because hill giants always get the short stick yeah hill giants really they got they did awful here don't take hill strike for that well you can take hill strike if you don't take upon taking the future feat in a vacuum looking at no, no prereqs they're, they're, those feats don't exist do you take this and if so what options are you taking i know i just like rambled through them but things that stuck out to you I, I, you know, I'm always a fan of of a ten foot push. I do. Uh, I do know yeah. you're always a fan of a ten foot push. But uh, I also like prone. I also like uh, knock the speed to zero. Um, yeah, different encounters. That these are useful things. Um, yeah. I kind of forgot what the rest were. That's most of them. You hit three of them. Uh, fire is just ten damage. Uh, yeah, Cloud strike but... is invisibility, and storm strike is disadvantage on attack rolls. Right. All right. Yeah, I like the I like the three I chose best. I really like Cloud. I don't think it justifies being a D four as opposed to D six, but it definitely is the coolest and it has the, the most. Yeah, it has the most yeah. flexibility to do other things beyond just like a neat little combat trick. And I want my feats to be flexible if I'm going to have them be small utility, like small instance uses. See, I say I like the ten foot push. And I uh, I don't mind that it's, you know, however many uses in a long rest, because I'm probably going to use that less than this, than, uh, than I'm allowed to, because that's the amount of times that it's going uh, to come up and be relevant. Yeah, I, I will say, like, it's nice that it's on a feat that anyone can use agnostic of weapons, because I think most of the time, if you're going to do the push thing, you're taking Crusher first every time, right? That's... And I'm not even a big fan of Crusher for that reason. Like, I don't think it's that useful. But if you want to do that build, you probably want Crusher first. You could also stack Hill Strike on top of that and get a 20-foot push. Yeah. Okay. That could be kind of neat. Maybe you're, like, you know, ping-pong paddling people around with your mall. That could, that'd be kind of cute. Could be the, uh, what, what, what's the new subclass? Uh, Path of Giants. Path of Giants. All right, sorry, my Kurt. The fan is just too much, Bob. I can't hear it, but it does be disruptive. All right, yes. Nailed it. So yeah, I uh, maybe that's the build you do for it, where your like objective is to smack people around all of space and time by just <laughs> taking really long noodly arms and a really big stick and just smacking people around. Is that useful? Mm -hmm. But it's neat. All right, you, you say barbarians don't have enough to do. That's so much to do for me. It's exclusively combat. It's all you do is hit things. Yeah, and, and what throw if you need to like? Around. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think knocking. Things what if you need to what? What what problem does throwing people thirty <laughs> feet not solve? I don't. I, you've gotten. I can't think of anything. You've bested me. Obviously, that's the solution to every problem in the barbarian <laughs> mind. I think knocking things prone is actually really solid. I think like the hill strike is sleeper probably one of the best of these because you strength save or drop it strength save is like you know not the best saving throw in the world but i don't put a lot of weight in that so maybe you just 
are the kind of character where you you run in and you go okay great i hill strike it and then i smash it three more times on your turn as like a fighter or something that seems pretty cool because it gives all those attacks advantage and it doesn't very crucially require any other action economy to do that right it's kind of like an ability to knock something prone twice per long rest or again as higher levels you can go three four five six mm-hmm. with proficiency bonus being able to set up a turn where you like drop something then hit it a bunch times at advantage seems really good on some specific builds like specifically on fighters, right? That can make the four, five, six right. attacks with advantage. Beyond that, like like you said, frost strike's pretty cool. I like the root dropping someone to zero speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that definitely plays most at the throne table, which goes again with path of giants. If you want to play a throne weapon based character, that's the kind of character that wants it. If you're playing the throne weapon master fighter, frost strike seems actually pretty sweet. Where you just like root something in place and say you're not going anywhere this turn, and I'm just gonna keep kiting you backwards. That's pretty mm-hmm. sweet. I like that play pattern a lot. They're an interesting, at least. I are two uses of that worth a feat. No, but well, it's... it depends on uh, what that feat leads to in future feats. Am no, I be but that's okay. <laughs> that, so, some of the future feats are pretty cool. Most of them are also proficiency bonus per long rest gated. Those do feel a little bit more like second or third level spells, at least, in their, like, utility. So there's a bit more play on some of them than others. Um, I think you're definitely at the nail on the head rate where, like, you do... If you take these, you probably want to make sure you're getting a secondary one. It's a crying shame that the best strike is attached to the worst other feet. Uh, spoilers. Yeah. Listen, if you're only going to come to this video and you're wondering if this specific feat is good, you should know Hill Strike is held back by Vigor of the Hill Giant. It's the cruel reality of the world that we live in. As long as, notably, if you do want to take this feat and you do want to like set it up for a next feat, if you can have an odd strength score going into this, you'll probably be fine. Because the next feat you'll get will bump your strength up alongside giving you the extra little flavorful ability. So that's going to be great. Um, consider that with this feat, even before taking the next one, an audibility score is going to be useful for getting you a positive modifier. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to delving into these uh, future specific feats. Yeah. I think this is probably better than Squire Salamnia and worse than all of the other martial feats that exist. That's still like a fine place to be. So I think it still deserves like a three. Yeah, I put it on some character sheets specifically for the fun of it. I think if I'm not going at a table that's like planning to have lethal encounter for lethal encounter and I want to play a specific look character or a character that tries to engage with a specific mechanic, like again, the super push or the, the throne rep and freeze person or the cloud like invisibility at will, like a way of shadows with cloud strikes seems like a really sweet build to me where you're like dipping out invisibility every round. I think I would have absolutely find room on my sheet for these, even if they're not like game warping or making every single encounter so much better. I don't know. Um, I like a lot of these effects, but I think there's other there's other feats you can take will do similar enough things, and aren't uh, long rest gated so severely. Uh, for that, I, I'm going to go with a two on this one. But maybe the future feats we talk about will. Uh, will change my tune. Could be. Commenters down below, let us know if I'm overrating this. Is Bob underrating this? Am I underrating this? How do you think? Find out next time on the Caverns and Creatures YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll talk more about every single one. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching. All right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Leave some comments and subscribe and like and all that. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.